with Cloud Native Rejects Conference sibling to KubeCon North America coming up uh, upon us. I'm here joined with Cindy Mullins. Cindy, thank you for giving a talk at Rejects. How are you yeah, today? Thank you. I'm good. Yeah, thanks, Vincent. Really appreciate the opportunity. Super. Uh, growing the community. Uh, it's, I don't, obviously, we're not going to cover the what you've already talked about here in this this chat. Um, but in the nature of kind of our Rejects podcast, and especially like like it's very obvious with the name of the conference, and so many folks were excited when it ever you know first happened with like how many people got rejection letters from KubeCon, loads and <laughs> loads and loads of rejection letters, right. and it was it was very obvious like so many good talks uh, that, that, that just needed to be heard. Uh, so there was like a place and a growth for it. And, uh, so here we are so many years later and it's still rolling. Um, and as we're getting yeah. back into virtual conferences, um, but it is very interesting to focus on rejection because it is such a letdown feeling and whatever aspect of life you're feeling it and you put yourself out there, uh, there's always that, you know, suspense of disbelief of like, is this going to fly or am I going to get rejected? Um, and give, submitting a, a talk submission is, you know, absolutely one of those things. Um, so as it relates to growing the community and dealing with uh, a project that, you know, itself grows by leaps and bounds and is working with, you know, another project, Envoy, that's grown leaps and mm -hmm. bounds. Um, right. I'm sure lessons, lo loads and loads of lessons learned, but what, what are some of the rejections that you might've even felt in those interactions uh, in, in your time of growing and building such a thriving community? Um, I, I don't know if, you know, I, I know there's so many talks, right, that get submitted for KubeCon. So I don't think I was particularly surprised <laughs> personally. I mean, there's so many things that 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 they you know that it needs to cover and that uh, people want to learn about. So I didn't you know take that particularly hard, but I was really glad to have an opportunity to resubmit this talk uh, for the Rejects event, and I was super excited to be chosen. So <laughs> you know I don't have a, a whole lot of experience giving these talks, so it was a moment of panic, like okay, <laughs> now I have to really do this, but um. You know, I've got great support from our team and I'm able to always, you know, put my ideas uh, past uh, Daniel Bryant, who's on our DevRel team and uh, Kelsey Evans, who's on our marketing team. And so, you oh, know, nice. I've got a lot of support uh, of folks that kind of help me kind of craft this talk. So that helped a lot. Yeah, that does help a lot. Um, in the in the community that it, you, um, the Emissary Ingress community, uh, did I see that it went into incubation the spring of 2021? So mm -hmm. it's been kind of a recent piece there. As it was getting into the CNCF incubation, and maybe since then, is there any particular like pushback or you know like let off the brakes? You know, we're we're, we're flying here, but is particularly has there been any kind of pushback that you've seen in that community or lessons learned in that in that regard? Um, you know, I think it's just really grown, to be honest with you. I think that the CNCF donation means that more people are becoming aware of Emissary Ingress. So we've seen increased traffic to our Slack channels. So that means more members in our community. Mm -hmm. We're getting a lot of questions, um, you know, about how to use Emissary Ingress. So I, I don't know that there's, you know, and we're coming out with releases, new releases at a, at a pretty quick clip. So... I don't think so, to be honest. I think That's it's great. just, you know, a lot of companies needing, you know, this sort of API gateway and and checking emissary ingress out to see if it will work for them. Yeah, I, I know that, you know, over the years, there's been handfuls of, you know, API gateways and they all had their own tailored reasons or whatever. But as, as I've already watched Envoy trucking along and doing what it's doing and being one of those core building blocks that, there was a good space for just like leveraging what's there, doing something that's Kubernetes native. I think it was a good place, right place at the right time. Um, yeah, it's, it, it seems so. Yeah. And your your involvement there in DataWire now, Ambassador, and, and you know all the, all the different projects as they've shifted and shaped. 
you you came on to data wire i guess you know as engineering a year year or so ago i guess more almost two years ago maybe mm -hmm. um so what tell me about your role there and and um how, how you got there and what, what what you like best about it yeah so th that's right i've been with the company for <clears throat> almost two years now and i started out as a junior engineer to be honest so that's kind of an interesting story, I nice. guess. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I have more of a, you know, administrative slash marketing background. Um, and, but I was looking to get more into the engineering side of things. I was really interested in Kubernetes, really interested in um, coding and development work. And so I did a, a training course uh, with a, a educational um, platform here called Treehouse, uh, which mm -hmm. is based in Portland, Oregon. And so when I joined DataWire at the time, which is now Ambassador Labs, I, I started out doing some front end uh, dev work, and and I and I did that, and I I worked on um, you know quite well. It was, it was really exciting. I worked on quite a few uh, you know features, um, but you know Ambassador Labs is a, is a really dynamic, growing company, and it was it was getting harder for me to keep up with like Golang development and sort of some of the mm. things that I would need to learn to really be able to contribute to engineering, you know, over the long term. Um, so that was kind of challenging. And as I was thinking, okay, well, what, you know, how can I contribute and what can I do? Um, this opportunity to transition into the uh, community management kind of popped up. And I thought, ooh, that would be really fun. I would, <laughs> I would really like to do that, you know. So take some of the skills that I've acquired and some of the things that I've learned and my understanding of the technology, and then be able to pivot and kind of apply that to the community and help other people find, you know, the resources and tools that they need to succeed. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's it, people come at things from all different directions, and I, uh, I particularly love like anybody with multidisciplinary backgrounds, because te you tend to think about things different and you have exposure to different processes and like ways of keeping track of things. And it's like, uh, it, it, it is needed for have, having people in, on one team that come at it from all different backgrounds and, you know, ways of tackling the challenge. Uh, so yeah. it, if, it, it, if you had the background and, you know, you said business administration, international business, all these different things. And then the development and then now community management. What do you think you you see like in that? I, I sometimes refer to as the fine golden thread, like that has really led you to the community, community management that like, oh, it was that thing that I learned in business administration or whatever that like, might have prepared me for this thing, you know, or like whatever it is, um, how, what, what do you think is you're drawing most from in like all the experiences with that has prepared you for community management? Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. I think so in administrative roles, you typically have, you're sort of multitasking, right? You're dealing with a lot of different things that have to happen according to a certain schedule. Oh, and right. so those skills really come in handy for this role as community manager, because as I mentioned in my talk, I sometimes feel like an air traffic controller with all these <laughs> kind of people coming in and, you know, they, yes. they're looking for different resources, whether it's technical information or documentation or, you know, a, a tutorial perhaps, or they're looking for educational resources. So yeah. that aspect, that aspect of my background, I think helps me figure out what people want and need and kind of connect with them right away. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that is absolutely true. And especially when they have like their different contexts and being able to jump to wherever they are in their question and their path. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Holy yeah. Moly. So, but then also having a taste of the engineering side of things helps me understand them better. So yeah. that would say that was really the missing piece. I don't know if I'd be as effective in this role if I didn't have that experience. So it's really been like a neat blend of kind of, you know, former skills that I had and the mm -hmm. new skills that I've been developing. And now I feel like I'm better suited for, for this role. That's awesome. And in such a community, the CNCF is huge and has such a broad reach. Uh, so you'll, you'll, it's, it's a good place. That's awesome. Um, 
yeah, and I, I guess I would just add the, the most important thing is, of course, that we really want to serve our community members. <laughs> so, you know, that, that they feel welcomed into the space and they can find what they need. So it's, yep. I'm, I, I'm really, it, it's, it's fun to be uh, a part of that. And I like, you know, interacting with people and I like to see them interact with each other. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a neat aspect of what I get to do. Completely agree. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the biggest blockers and especially like a project, if it doesn't have a clear path for folks to join or become involved or, you know, grow themselves for the project, then it, it can feel exclusionary. So super. Mm-hmm. Well, um, with that, uh, thank you for the quick chat. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.